born in a very small town called Hacienda Heights. And I came over in California. And I came over to England, oh my goodness, about 150 years ago. <laughs> it was about 17 years ago when I came over first. Should I just keep on going? Talk for two days, okay? <laughs> no. So I came over here as a model. And, I mean, but let me tell you how I got into modeling really fast. Um, I used to do beauty pageants, as we do in California. And one of the judges said, listen, Cap, you can make a lot of money. And I thought, oof, okay, where do we go? So off to New York and then, and then off to England, because essentially here you have to do a lot of magazine work, and then you make a lot of money on the catalogs and the campaigns. So I came over here, and uh, within six months, I wore this see-through gown, and surprise, surprise, I was on the cover of every single newspaper and <laughs> magazine alive. So I think um, I think I got really, really lucky. I didn't really have to use my noodle. I just had to use my assets, and it worked. <laughs> but uh, the interesting part is, and that was 17 years ago. I mean, to make you know a lot of the celebrities these days, they're a one-shot wonder. They're here, they're massive, and a year later, they're working at you know some ice cream shop somewhere. So, <laughs> so I've had quite a long-standing career. But you know, for me, and as a model when I was modeling, I'm 42 now. I'm way over the hill from modeling. But you know, when I, when I entered my 30s, I thought, oh dear Lord, I've got one foot in the grave. What am I gonna do next? And so... Uh, so you became this successful uh, model, and how did you come up with the idea to do something uh, on the business side? Well, you know, like I said, in my, in my 30s, I had to think of plan B, you know? Even though I was doing really, really well, and I was making money that you could only dream about, very lucky. You know, it doesn't last forever, regardless how successful you are. So you have to think, okay, either you're going to marry some billionaire, or you're going to, you know, you're going to slough it out and think of Plan B. And I thought, okay, I'm going to think of Plan B. And that was, okay, what would everyone buy into? Underwear. <laughs> Duh. So that was it. That was it. So then I started out doing a license deal because I knew Jack S H I T about business, right? So I, I, I. I I called up a guy called Terry Green, and he was running a company called Denim's at the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, Terry, I know you don't, well, you probably know of me, but, you know, I'm Caprice, and I want to come in. I have this brilliant idea that I want to pass by you. And I was lucky. I got, you know, he said, oh, he was quite interested. So I went to his office, and I said, and there were no license deals at that time. Now, of course, the market is absolutely saturated. Um, and I said, yes, I think that you should put in millions into having my brand, and you could pay me 8%. <laughs> and he thought, are you on some kind of crack? And I said, yeah, you've got to trust me on this. You've got to trust me. I think it's going to work. It's all about marketing, and I could get free marketing for you. You just have to give me a good product. So he said, okay, Cap, I'm going I'm to I'm go with it. I'm going to go with it. And I said, good. I'm going to make you very rich, or make Debenhams very rich. And... I did. I made them so damn rich that I thought, you know what? I'm gonna, t I'm gonna take this back. This is crazy. So five years later, I, um, I started doing all my research, and I went to China, and I sourced some factories, and I went to Debenhams and to Terry, and I said, Terry, I'm, I'm gonna take this over now. I'm buying back my license, and I want you to buy the product. <laughs> So they had license. That didn't go over very well. <laughs> <laughs> they had license, and you were kind of uh, trying to claim it back, uh, and it was a big fight between you and the Venoms. Well, it wasn't a. F well, okay, maybe it was a little bit of a fight, but uh, you know, because they were they were taking home probably an eighty percent margin, and now okay. they're going to take home. Well, then again, they take ridiculous margins. They take home sixty one percent margin, but uh, maybe at that time, because the exchange rate was so ridiculous, they were taking more. You know, and so they were a little bit reluctant, but I said, listen, Terry, I give this company free publicity. You want to let that go? I'll go to over to House of Frasier. You, you tell me now, because it's going to be a big story that I leave you and I go over to House of Frasier. And so he said, okay, okay, you win. Okay, you win. And I said, okay. But then my first collection, I really screwed it up because it was all my ego. It was my ego. I'm Caprice, and I'm going to make what Caprice likes, and blah, blah, blah. It didn't work. It was a huge flop, and I lost a ridiculous amount of money because, like a schmuck, I didn't uh, bring in any equity partners. I just started it up with my own money from my modeling days. So that was a really valuable lesson there. And then from then on, 
And the business is still just you, or you have some equity partners right no, now? No, it's still me. Like okay. still like a schmuck. <laughs> but you learned some lessons on the on the on the way. Oh, uh, honey, I've learned so many lessons. So what are the biggest aha moments uh, in terms of building up a business uh, in an industry like fashion, which is very saturated? Retail is really different, difficult, guys. I mean, I'm not gonna. You know, I, I still put in a good 12-hour day, and, and also, you know, I just had two baby boys, so it's it's not easy, you know, and, and to make money these days, you really have to work. Money doesn't grow on trees like it used to, but <laughs> it did. It was fabulous. 2008 hit, and it's like, oh, shit, I have to start working now, <laughs> but, but um, lesson, you asked about lesson. Oh, some aha moments uh, which you've learned on the way. If you would give so uh, an advice to somebody who is starting in fashion, we have some some startups here from the fashion industry. Which advice would you give them? Uh, you know, there's a, there's a few things. Um, yes, you could make a, a tremendous margin, but you've got to. You know, people aren't impulsively buying anymore. You got to give them a good product. You got to do the marketing. You know, great customer service. Don't be greedy. Like for me, yeah, I make a decent margin, but I put more money back into my product because I want longevity. I've been running seven years. And most of these celebrities that are endorsing products are only around again for one year, then it's gone, it's dead. Even though, yes, I own my own brand, but I have been in the public eye. And I've been going for seven years and we're still going strong and we're actually making money. And it's hard to make money in retail, I'm telling you, it's hard. So, you know, don't be greedy. Give them a good product, even though I know the, the margins could be, you know, they could be quite good. Um, employees. You know, initially I went down the road where I didn't want to pay very much, and I got what I paid for, trust me. And I paid for it because you need to pay for good people and you need to work like a team and you as an as a as a ceo or, or the person who's starting up whatever business you like you have to learn every single integral part of your business whoever comes into my business whichever employee i train them myself because i know about everything and i'm not being arrogant i'm being bloody truthful because if i don't i lose money and i don't like losing money and for me, um, you know, especially if you're in retail, like I, my, I have my factories in, in Hong Kong and, and within China. So I do a lot of arbitrage. I buy my products in, in, uh, in dollars and then I get paid primarily in sterling and euro. So I'm exchanging monies all the time. I lost so much money, 1.6 million at one point. And I'll never forget that moment in 2009 because me like a schmuck, I didn't know how to, you know, I didn't know how to do forwards. I didn't know how to do any of this. So I was just exchanging when I needed the money. Um, so that was, a, that was my biggest lesson ever. You know, one day to all of a sudden having to pay my factories this amount, a crazy amount of money, and then me going and doing my exchange, and boom, I'm hit. So, um, uh, Okay, and so after, uh, the, the, the building the team, having a good product is very really critical. So right now, in terms of the team, uh, which which areas of the start of the of the company would you see as critical? Is it marketing? Is it the product development? Is it the PR de department? It's in today's world. It's not just one. It's everything, mm -hmm. and it's everyone working together. You know, and, and even with me, my desk is with all my other employees. I'm not the big CEO. You know. That's nice. I'm, I'm working with my team. It really is about teamwork because you get a good team and you make money. You've got, you, you know, and that's been a really big lesson for me as well and to look after my team and to not, you know, th these are my, my friends, these are my family. And I take it very, very serious. I'm supporting families, you know, and, 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 and so you have to look after the people that work for you. You really, really do because they'll, they'll, they'll help build your brand. They'll give them, they'll give you your, you know, their soul, you know, and, and their passion for, okay. for the brand. Uh, concerning, we had a brief chat uh, before about uh, the e-commerce and the online side of the, the fashion mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. Do you want to yeah. share with us some, some of your thoughts of uh, where your business is and where it's going in terms of uh, the next It's all about online. Years? It's all about online. Like okay. we were discussing, wait, let me just go this way more. Okay, there we go. <laughs> we're comfortable. Um, 
uh, as we were discussing earlier, you know, with, with, my, with my big stock is House of Fraser, you know, Next, Shop Direct, and not Shop Direct, they don't have any stores. These people, their biggest store is online. And it's so fast and easy. You could replan in two seconds. You know, one thing with my products is a lot of sales, a lot of people in sales, this is another thing that I would recommend. Are a lot of you in retail, no, are in fashion, or there's a few, yeah? Because I won't get into the intricate details then because it might bore the hell out of you about retail, some secrets that I've learned, but um, I won't do that because I don't see him. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do it privately after. <laughs> I don't want to bore everyone else. <laughs> Um, now I forgot your darn question. We're talking about the online world and uh, going forward in the future. So you still see a big future for the online. And it's the all design. about online. You know, the reaction is fast. You could get product out fast. You could reach out to the entire world online. That is a massive store and a massive platform for you. And also, you know, talking about online and, and, and media, you know, I, it used to be where you have to spend, you know, tens of thousands of pounds on PR companies, and now you have all these entities that are free. You know what's amazing about Twitter? I tweet on my little Twitter thing, or actually Stephanie over here does it for me, and she says, you know, here the new collection just came out. Check out um, this, that, 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 that. Boom! We have sales right away. It's so powerful. Your website, it's so powerful. You think, oh, I, I'm going to start up this business. I have to have so much money. No, you don't. You just have to ha you be, a ri be original and, and find. You don't really need to spend a lot. I mean, I spent, what, 2000 on my website. I found somebody in South Africa who built it for me. You know, and Twitter, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's one of the best forms of PR for me these days. It's not even the cover of the sun anymore. You know, it's, it's yeah, social Twitter. Social makes it much easier. Uh, in terms of uh, trying out the product before you buy, uh, I keep hearing from the uh, fashion industry that there are lots of returns if it comes to online, up to 70%. Do you have any problems with that? No, up to 70% and you're out of business, honey. No. <laughs> it's mostly, the average is about 30%. That's nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The average is about 30%. And yeah, but that just comes with the business. But I don't have to deal with it. I don't have my own online store because I just can't deal with the headaches. So, you know, like I have Fig Leaves and ASOS and Shop Direct. And yeah, I take a, a bit of, you know, maybe a 2% less margin and they just deal with all of that. So. Okay, that's, that's cool. Uh, in terms of people management, did you have to learn many lessons in there? Like when you have bigger teams and people working for you now? Uh, in people management. Do you have any, any tips for, for the audience of what is working for yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, it's not about ego, guys. You want to make money. It's about, it's about a teamwork. You know, and I, and I know I've stressed it again, so I'm not going to get into detail, but I, I had some major lessons because initially it was about my ego. And yeah, I got people for a lot less money and I paid for it. And, and I believed my own bullshit and I paid for it. You know, now it's about getting a good team, it's about getting the right team, and it's about treating them well. Okay, that's, uh, that's a good tip. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to evolving, so you started with uh, licensing out your... Uh, go over there, sorry. Steph, can you go over there, sorry. Uh, <laughs> licensing out your, your uh, brand, then you took it back. Uh, uh, now the margins are better for you. Uh, do you see any, any uh, further changes in the industry where uh, uh, what is the evo evolution of your business model? Well, you know, I had to completely change my business model in 2008. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, God, we were shifting so many products, it was ridiculous. And, and you know, most of my buyers were cutting their buys by half. So you really had to, I mean, everyone did this, you have to shift everything, you have to rejig your cash flow. That's one thing, that's another thing. Cash flow is your Bible. If you don't know what it is, learn it. <laughs> cash, I know what's coming in and going out for the next eight months to a year, and I live by it. Um, I forgot the darn question again. Where were we? Uh, we were talking about the evolution of business model. And uh, like you went from uh, having the, the brand, uh, uh, which was used by, by Debenhams, then took it back. Now we have your own business. Uh, mm -hmm. 
do you see any, any big changes coming up in in the future for for your for your brand? Yeah, I mean the the buys are quite tight, and we're and I'm taking a lot of the risk because the buyers are too scared, you know, and they have very limited money power these days because retail is really affected in this country and in a sure. lot of European countries. So what I'm having to do is to buy a lot of extra stock for replenishments. That's risk, and that's a lot of risk. Of course, I take a very calculated risk. Nevertheless, it is risk, and that's why you know retail is just really, really difficult. But you have to adjust to the changing times and to the economy. You know, I have somebody that's working for me now who's like still lives in the past. I'm telling this guy, listen, it's over. It's finished. Those days are over. I know it was fun. And I know it's great, but adjust your way of thinking. Adjust your way of, of selling, and be realistic and work with that. It's harder. Mm -hmm. When it comes to PR, so you're using quite cleverly social media, you're tweeting, and uh, you have a big audience, uh, as you noticed, uh, on Twitter as well. Uh, how are you using PR to get the word out there? PR is, uh, let me give you an example. <coughs> I just did a big campaign with, um, oh God, what is it? Fern thingy bumper. The can. The can from Towie. Now you think, oh my God. Mm. Let me tell you, my sales went up by 120% with wow. this firm. Yeah, yeah. The power of marketing. But also, I can't stress to you enough, you have to have a good product for longevity. Don't go cheap on your products. The, consu the, the customers these days, they are not impulsive buyers and they want quality and they want a good price. And they could get it. They could get it these days. The competition is fierce. It's scary out there. So you have to compete. And do you work with designers very hands on? Or you let, let them Honey, do I do all the designs myself. I do it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. I do all the designs oh. myself with this lovely, how old is Nisha? This 22 year old girl. We go, yeah, we go to Paris. I, and then I go to China. I pick all my fabrications. And we do, and I, and I do the designs with Nisha. I know my market better than anyone else. Because again, if I make bad designs and I've done that, then I lose money myself. So it's nice to get Nisha in because you know she has some fresh ideas, but then I have to pull her back because she's quite a high-end designer and I have to remain commercial and I have to identify who is my target market. Who am I selling to? This isn't about me, this isn't about my ego. This is about who is my target market so I can supply them, their demand, and make money. That's a good question. So how did you deci decide to find your niche? Uh, how did you decide who's gonna be your target market? Well, at the time, that's when the license deal happened, and Debenhams found my target market for me. Okay. So I was very lucky and very calculated as well, okay, calculating as well. You know, Debenhams, they found my market, they found my, sort of my, um, um, my signature, um, and, and I just expanded on it and actually made it better. Okay, and so who is your, briefly, your, your target customer? My target market initially was it was 18 to 28, it was a very young, young market. Now because I'm getting older, um, it, it's broadened, and so it's about 18 to 38 now. Okay. And also my designs have changed, they, they aren't as sexy, they're a bit, you know, there's a bit more coverage. The, 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 the colors are still bold and strong and fun, and it's primarily a fashion-led product rather than an everyday wearable, you know, continuity. Even though I do have my whites and blacks continuity, but it's more about the fashion. Okay, and who is the buyer? We know in some, some segments there are uh, lots of people who are deciding upon a product, but uh, the users are uh, somebody else. Are these ladies buying underwear or girls buying underwear for themselves? Or are the are men buying it for no, I mean, ladies as a present? Well, I mean, Valentine's Day is obviously a very good time for me. Um, it's even better than the Christmas time, actually, because the boys are still, you know, I guess they remember me from way back when, when I was getting my babs out for Maxim magazine. But, um, so, <coughs> Valentine's Day is great for me. But, you know, even with all the people that ask for signatures, you know, they write in and ask for my signature. It's primarily women in my tweet, in my, on my Twitter and my Facebook. It's primarily women now. Um, so, that, that's, yeah, um, yeah. That's the target market. And uh, when, you, when you look at, uh, at your competition, uh, who is the fiercest uh, competition competitor to your, to your brand? 
Well, you know what's so extraordinary is you have the likes of Ultimo and, and Summers and Wonder Bra. These are the people that, I, that are my direct competition. I wish I was making the kind of money that they were making, that they're making, you know? I, it, it's, but that is, you know, but that's my market, and so I have to, uh, I have to work my tootsies off to compete against them, because they're like big monsters, you know? Okay, and when you're starting, uh, obviously a female entrepreneur, do you see uh, often in this business of, of fashion and fashion design, there are many female entrepreneurs, or there is still a disproportionate number of, uh, of females versus males in the business? I mean, we have to call a spade a spade. Here in Europe, it's very different from America. In America, you find women are taking over. But women are becoming more like men in America, too. I mean, my best friend, I, she, she's like a man. Yeah, and she's 42, and she's not married, and she can't even get laid, for God's sakes. So I'm like, honey, you know, you have to have a balance here. They're just aggressive and like men. But here in Europe, it, it's still a man's world. It, it really is, and it, and it was quite difficult for me uh, when I first started. I had to really prove myself. One, I'm a woman, and two, I was a model. Disaster. I mean, I, I called up, you know, the, the uh, Simon Wolfson, you know, the, the head of Next myself. He wouldn't even take my call. And that's when I was at the height of my everything. And he said, no, we're not going to invest, you know, in your product because let's just see what happens. And so I had to really work hard with Debenhams. And then I had the numbers. And then I kept stalking and kept And I know if I was a man, it would have been slightly different. You know, and then I had the numbers, and I said, okay, I have the numbers now. And he's like, I heard. I said, okay, okay, I want a meeting. Boom, I was in, boom, took my first order. So he was ignoring your calls, and then unless you, you prove yourself, and you prove yourself, then it, he was fine to, to meet you and discuss. I don't even, you know, he didn't even say <clears throat> until you prove yourself. I knew I had to do, I knew okay. I needed the numbers. And people, it's a very small industry, people would start talking. Yeah. But for people that aren't maybe in the public eye, yeah, if you have the numbers, you have power. You have power. Okay, now when you want to get a meeting with somebody, uh, it's not so hard anymore, right? Because oh, honey, it's a your... piece of cake, yeah. But, you know, I've had, well, I've been, I've had by Caprice lingerie for seven years now. And we're doing, you know, and we're doing really, really well. Mm -hmm. And you want to still focus on, on the female market only, or how is the, the, the market on the male side? How is the market on the male side? Well, the margins aren't as good. Okay. And uh, I only do, one thing that I do recommend is that you focus in on one thing that you're good at and one thing that you have a passion for. Stick with it and make it work. But let me tell you something. You're going to fall down 100,000 times because I did. Even, you know, with all the extraordinary circumstances that I've had, you know, with starting up my business, i.e. the marketing and, and for people, you know, people knowing who I am. In a way, it was an advantage. In a way, it was a disadvantage. Um, uh, but you you got to keep up and you got to keep going. you got to keep going because you get tempted and you feel, start to feel sorry for yourself. You know what my mom always says, excuse my language, but she says you throw shit against the wall so many times and eventually it's going to stick. Okay, that's a good point because, uh, for example, if, uh, <laughs> where do we go from there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, you're, when you're talking about uh, you, have, you have your ups, you have your downs, uh, what are the biggest lows in your business and how did you overcome them? Well, it was it was you know it was 2008. That was the crisis. That was really really difficult, and it was difficult for everyone. You know, you had to adapt. You had to change your business model. You had to. Nobody was giving any kind of loans at the time. Before that, I was doing a back to back because I would have to buy my stock, and then I wouldn't get paid for 60, 30, or 60 days later. And I mean, uh, I mean, I was buying so much stock. There were millions of, of, of pounds going out to pay for my stock, and banks weren't doing back to backs anymore. Orders were being slashed. You just have to adjust, and you got it. You got to make it work. There is no such thing as no, I can't. There is okay, there's solutions, and I gotta find them, and I gotta find them fast. And that's what it is, being a CEO, that's what it is, starting up your own business. It's not easy, guys. It's a hard world out there now. But you gotta keep going, you gotta be smarter than the next, you gotta do your research. You know, it just won't come to you. You got to work. You gotta work, and you gotta educate yourself. And you gotta keep going. 
Yeah, I fully agree with that. Uh, when it, so the crisis was here, then you overcame it, and now what do you see as your biggest challenges uh, in the business today? Well, you know, right now, right now as a woman, <laughs> we have to be Wonder Woman. I swear we do. You know, I just had two babies, and, you know, to be at home and you know you want to be at home with your children you want to take care of them you want to be with them all the time but then you have to run this business and then on top of that you've got your man who's like your baby too you know he wants attention all the time so it's right now my biggest challenge is a little bit more personal as a woman just trying to find that balance and trying to find you know, I'm, I'm tired, I'm getting no sleep. You know, one of my son's jet keeps waking up and rah, for three hours and I'm not gonna pick him up anymore. I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it. He's gotta just sleep through the night and, and it's hard to hear him cry for three hours. It just tears me to pieces. And I wake up with, you know, only four hours of sleep all the time, it's hard. So you have these two babies and a big baby, uh, some experience <laughs> together, and you're still working these 12 hour days. How do you keep the balance? Uh, what's your secret? There isn't a secret. You just, you just got to figure it out. And I have to be honest, guys. I haven't figured it out yet. I just haven't figured it out. You know, my boys are. Well, it's a long story. One is five, and one is six months. But it's. I haven't figured it out yet because I want to be at home with my babies all the time. And I just. You can't. You got to run a business too. You know, if you want the kids to have good education, have a good future. You know, I'm making and I'm breathing for my children now. It's not about me anymore when, oh, let me tell you, it was all about me before, you know? And now it's just, it's about my kids. And it's hard, you know, you become a bit softer. You, you know, you become a bit more patient, which sometimes isn't that good. But, but you know, I'm just trying to work it out now. You definitely juggle these, uh, uh, these responsibilities in the family and with the business. Are you the kind of uh, a manager who is uh, used to having uh, people very hands-on, like you want to solve all the problems, or people have uh, also their own responsibilities, you rely on them, you trust them? What kind of manager are you? Well, you know, I, I, I do micromanage the, the office, and some people would probably say, oh, you're a control freak. Mm. I used to be, but you got to get to a point in your in your career where you got to trust your employees. You know, you got to, I don't even like calling them employees, you got to trust your team. Mm. And I'm at that point. Now, I've got a really great team. However, I've been through hell and back to get that team. But I'm there, and so I am able to spend, you know, a little bit more time at home. Instead of going into work at, at nine, I can now go into work sometimes at, you know, 11, sometimes even 12 o'clock, and then stay at work till seven. But, you know, it's, it's um, you gotta trust your team. When it comes to product, so we talked about you want to stay in the in the female niche, in the female segment. Uh, do you see your products expanding into certain other niches, or you want to stay where you are right now? No, I mean it's all about movement in business. You can't stay stagnant. Somebody will come and run you over. So right now, you know, I'm very lucky. I just work with what I'm given, right? So I just recently landed a really big TV show in America. And it's going to be airing in June. So I'm thinking, okay, how could I use this to my advantage? Okay, license deals. I'm not going to do what I'm doing now because it's just too hard. I'll just license out my name, you know, and, and, and I'm going down more of the baby route and the maternity where there is no good. There, do, does anyone have children here? There is no, there's nothing good as far as clothes are concerned when you're pregnant. You just have to look big and fat and feel so not sexy, you know? And, and so, I, you know, it, it just seems like the, the right progression for me to go down that road and expand in maternity wear as far as bras and swimwear. Um, and even baby food, there's, there's such a huge market for that. So, um, so that's what I'm doing next. I'm just going to expand my Bi Caprice products and my Bi Caprice vision. And you're happy to go the licensing route as well? I'm going down the license road for license deals. I, I, you know, it's, it's so much work doing it on your own. It really, really is. I can believe that. Yeah. Um, so would you consider uh, exiting the company and just, you know, uh, take a vacation for a couple of years and not, not do it? Or this is like a baby where you want to see growing up and you want to still keep building it? Well, I think I do have stepchildren and I do want to leave one of my step is, is my daughter, my mm -hmm. stepdaughter. And I would like to, 
you know, leave this business for her. But um, going on holiday for two years, I would be bored out of my mind. Um, you know, I've been working since I'm 16 years old. I'm a worker. I'm a grafter. That's what I do. That's what I love. I, even though I'm exhausted, I love waking up in the morning and having a massive goal, you know, and I'm willing to work hard and I have worked hard for it, even though, you know, God has really blessed me with the way I look and I was able to make money. But like most models, they'll just go down, let's just marry a millionaire and call it a day. Boom. I said, no, like a schmuck. I said, no, <laughs> I'm going to do this myself, but it makes me feel good. It makes me feel alive. And so nice to, 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 to have a goal and to get that goal and to be rewarded with a, with a really great lifestyle as well because I worked hard for it. Yeah, so, you, so you're ambitious, you want to leave some legacy behind. Uh, if you were to uh, start some, some other business, something new, what would that be? Um, well, again, I would only do what I know, you know, and I know retail. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think, I, I don't think I would deviate from that platform. I'd be an idiot. You know, I have seven years behind me of research and, and, and marketing and, and, and target markets, and I know that platform. So I think I would stay with that. And like I said before, I would just expand, just expanding mm -hmm. to other avenues within the retail market.